Millions of people commit crimes every day, and there are many different theories for why criminals do what they do. The five main theories are the classical theory, positive theory, psychoanalytical theory, sociological theory, and the social contract theory. Although all of these theories describe some possible reasons for why people commit crimes, the theory that I agree with the most is the classical theory. Caesar Beccaria is considered the founder of the classical theory. According to Caesar Beccaria, crime is caused by the individual free will. Human beings are rational and make decisions freely and with understanding of consequences. Persons rationally choose actions that will bring them pleasure. Crime is an immoral form of behavior. This theory is based on the idea that a person who commits the crime is in the wrong because of their actions and not because of their mental state. Punishment is because people choose to commit a crime. The punishment should be severe enough to deter criminals from committing a crime. The punishment should fit the crime. Vicaria believed that law should be impartial and that all persons are equal under the law. The role of the government is to control crime by enacting laws and ensuring that the laws are enforced through swift punishment. In this theory, more prisons and stiffer criminal laws with greater penalties for the offenders are considered to be the best solutions of crime. Like it says in this quote, the punishment should fit the crime rather than fitting the criminal. The main points about classical theory of crime that Caesar Becerra and Jeremy Bentham stated are that 1. People have free will to choose how to act. 2. Deterrence is based upon the notion of the human being as a hedonist who seeks pleasure and avoids pain and a rational calculator weighing up, up the costs and benefits of the consequences of each act. Thus, it ignores the possibility of irrationality and unconscious drives as motivational factors. 3. Punishment can deter people from crime as the costs outweigh the benefits and that the severity of punishment should be proportionate to the crime. 4. The more swift and certain the punishment, the more effective it is in deterring criminal behavior. It is important to understand the seriousness of a crime apart from the criminal's intentions or cognitive state. The statement, people have free will to choose how to act, is important when looking at the classical theory of crime. It is the reason why the government cannot put people in jail before they commit a crime because they have a choice to do it or not. Free will can be defined as a voluntary choice or decision. Every criminal makes a voluntary choice to commit an offense. This does not mean that they are not influenced or compulsively swayed to act in this way, but they are still 100% re responsible for their actions. If people do not have free will, then why would we punish them at all? Every criminal should be accountable for their decisions, and two people who make the same decisions should be given the same punishments. If a person is a sociopath or a psychopath, they still have a free will, and they still get to decide whether they are going to give in to their impulses. Because everyone gets to choose whether they commit a crime or not, the punishment should fit the crime, not the criminal. The reason the positive theory believes that the penalty should fit the criminal is because they believe, in a sense, it is not the criminal's fault. This is not true. People are equally responsible for their actions, independent of their mental state or current or past situations. The classical theory supports the idea that deterrence is based on, upon the notion of the human being as a hedonist who seeks pleasure and avoids pain, and a rational calculator weighing up the costs and the benefits of the consequences of each action. Thus it ignores the poss possibility of irrationality and unconscious drives as a motivational factor. This point is a pivotal aspect in the classical theory. It suggests that a person is guilty of the crime they commit without taking into account the possibility of irrationally and unconscious drives as motivational factors. Caesar Beccaria agreed with this idea when he said, 
crimes are more effectually prevented by the certainty than the severity of punishment he believed that people would be deterred from committing a crime if the punishment was absolute law should be certain and not wavering or relying on a person's condition or circumstances the punishment should not be more or less severe depending on the criminal caesar Beccaria, along with many others believe that the penalties for crime should be absolute this is one of the most important ideas that is a part of the classical theory punishment can deter people from crime as the costs outweigh the benefits and that severity of punishment should be proportionate to the crime this statement supports the idea that punishment is essential when trying to deter crime in caesar precaria's book of crimes and punishments he states if every individual be bound to society society is equally bound to him by a contract which from its nature equally binds both parties this obligation which descends from the throne to the cottage and equally binds the highest and lowest of mankind signifies nothing more than it is the interest of all that conventions which are useful to the greatest number should be punctually observed the violation of this compact by any individual is an introduction to anarchy he explains that to have an equal society every crime needs to be dealt with equally for example a sociopath and a teenager who does not have a mental issue both kill a person they should receive exactly the same punishment but the way the justice system really works is that the sociopath would get a life sentence and the teenager would receive a lesser punishment. The law needs to be equal. Every person should be treated the same under the law. Not only is this a more ethical way to run the justice system, but it will also deter crime. The more swift and certain the punishment, the more effective it is in deterring criminal behavior. People should not have to wait around for their punishment. If criminals knew that their sentence was coming very soon after their conviction, then, it will, then they would be less likely to commit that crime in the first place. Because criminals have free will, they also have the ability to see the trajectory of their actions. Therefore, if they know that there will be a specific penalty that comes quickly after their conviction, then they will think more about their actions and be deterred from committing that crime. Right now, people have to wait months to get a sentence and for their punishment to be carried out. It is extremely important for criminals or aspiring criminals to understand the severity of their actions by showing them that their sentence has to come very soon after they have committed a crime. The problem with today's justice system is that it changes for different people. This is dangerous because criminals today believe that they can get off by reason of insanity or many other arguments that lessen the severity of their penalty. It is safe to say that the majority of offenders can make their sentences less in a number of different ways. This is not how it should work. Perpetrators need to understand that certain crimes have absolute consequences, and those consequences come soon after a person's conviction. The classical theory of crime focuses mainly on the responsibility a person has for their actions and the significance of the way punishments are carried out. Surprisingly, it is not as common as it used to be. People try to think of different reasons for why people do what they do because individuals do not want to think that criminals actually choose to do the horrific things that they do. In the 21st century, not many people want to think that everyone is responsible for their actions. Rather, they want to find reasons why humans can be so evil. The truth is, everyone has free will and they have to be held accountable for their actions. Caesar Beccaria was the main theorist involved in identifying the different aspects of classical theory. Without him, there probably would not be anybody fighting for and upholding his theory. Although the government's justice system does not function by using Caesar's classical theory of crime, many people support and encourage his ideas. Hopefully the Canadian justice system realizes the desperate need this country has for using his ideas. It is very important to encourage Caesar's theories because they will help the justice system be more equal. 
his classical theory of crime shows the importance of these ideologies and even ways in which the government can change to accommodate these theories